Remove the excess material after sanding. Be careful, these blades can get pretty sharp, especially when you're sanding. The trailing edge of the blades can get very, very sharp. So I remove my material and I check my balance again. Start with my what was my heavy blade high side and release. It looks like it's still slightly heavy, so let's go ahead and take it off and continue our sanding. We're getting closer. Very small adjustments will get you closer to your balance point without going beyond. Now, typically, I would stop here. This is a very well balanced propeller. There's no other modifications I need to make to it. Again, the heavy side is going to be uh, the heavy side of the hub is going to be low right now, but you'll notice very minimal vib vibration at a 12 inch prop at this size. Um, in, in most cases, uh, as far as the hub being out of balance. Now, you can take it one step further and uh, add material, uh, be cautious removing material, never drill, never grind anything on the hub. Uh, that can greatly affect the structural integrity of the prop and you don't want prop failure. It's not only dangerous but it all can be very destructive uh, to your model. So uh, oftentimes people will add weight to the hub, to the light hub side. In this case this is the light hub side. I can use a little bit of CA uh, adhesive, cyanoacrylate adhesive, or I could, uh, in some cases I've seen people use uh, Velcro strips and actually take the soft cloth side of the Velcro strip, cut a small piece, place it on the hub, check the weight again. If they still need to add additional weight, they'll add CA to that, that, piece, of, uh, that piece of Velcro. So, uh, Cosmetically, it's not exactly the, the most desirable way to balance your prop by adding uh, Velcro pieces and glue, but if you're really concerned about uh, an extremely smooth rotating prop with the least amount of vibration or oscillation, well, and then sometimes aesthetic have to take, aesthetics have to take the back seat. So um, balancing the hub is your choice. In most cases, I never worry about it. At, these, uh, at the weight of these propellers and the RPMs that are traveling, if you get both the propeller blades balanced well, you're going to have a very successful, very reliable, uh, very high-performing prop. So Now we're going to go ahead and try balancing the smaller 5x5 five five prop from APC. Again, fresh out of the package, we'll see how this one fares in the balancing. Now one thing you'll find is that you need a very clean arbor, very clean wheels, um, and a very sensitive prop balancer to be able to balance props of such light weight. Um, when we look at these smaller props, if we pull out our scale, and this is a, uh, another 5x5 five five that's actually been balanced and used. We look at the weight of a 5x5 five five prop, it's 3.4 grams. There isn't a whole lot of weight there you figure divide that in half and then look at the the balance the off balance propeller blade being heavy enough to be able to swing it to the low point on the arbor and there isn't a whole lot of weight there to uh, to uh, force this entire metal shaft to be able to center out so let's see how our true spin prop balancer does I always like to kind of roll especially any small ones I'll roll the arbor a little bit make sure I don't hear anything clicking on the wheels it's not uncommon to get a little bit of grit on there a little bit of, uh, of material you sanded um, and that can greatly affect the performance of the prop balancer. So I like to give it a nice spin, make sure that it rotates well, and then give it a chance to center out. And as you can see, this true spin prop balancer is very, very sensitive, and that couple gram prop has very quickly found its low point, or found its heavy blade. So, going back with the method we used before, we'll go ahead and verify we have the back side of this prop. We'll find our heavy blade. We'll grab our marker. We'll mark near the hub on the heavy blade so we know which one to sand on. We'll clean up our workspace a little bit and then we'll get sanding. Okay, and after our first sanding on the 5x5, five five, We looked out. <laughs> we hit. We hit pretty much level. So, now these tiny props can be a little, a little difficult to verify center on sometimes. 
but it looks like it has a tendency to settle back in the horizontal position. Again, one side of our hub will be kind of heavy. We know that. As most props out of the package do have a, an out of balance hub. But this prop's not too bad. It's really settling in pretty well wherever I put it. It's not, it's not really taking off to one heavy blade very rapidly. So I'd say we have a pretty balanced propeller now. Now, a big misconception is people think these small propellers really don't need balancing. They're so small they have very little impact. But in fact, they're usually mounted on extremely high KV motors, so they're turning a very fast RPM and um, can cause some significant vibrations when they're out of balance. So always check your small props. It only takes a couple of minutes to throw them on the balancer, get them balanced, and you'll notice a huge difference uh, when you spin this up to the RPM ranges. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at balancing a spinner. Now mounting a spinner is a little different than mounting a prop in two ways. One, the way it mounts on the arbor and also the configuration of your prop balancer itself. In this case we have a spinner with no hole in the end so there's no way for us to pass an arbor through. So we're forced to mount the arbor in a way that adheres to the back plate of the spinner but does not protrude to the other end. So we need a way to support this arbor from only one side. Well, we can't put it in this configuration. Even if we scoot the two towers closer together, the weight of the spinner will just tip the arbor right off the balancer. So I fortunately have a second Dubro balance here, here a true spin balancer. And we're going to use it in this configuration, one where we put the balancing wheels low on the first tower and high on the second tower. This allows us to set up a scenario where our rod is actually, our arbor is actually supported on the bottom and on the top, taking advantage of the fulcrum point being this first tower. So as we mount our spinner, now we have a free moving arbor ready for balancing. So let's go ahead and mount up our spinner. Now mounting a spinner, again, same concept. You're going to use the stationary back collar, run your tapered, your, your um, tapering cone or your centering cone up against that stationary collar, run that into the back plate the actual backer plate of the spinner. Run the second one. Again, now you'll see in this particular situation, it's so thin and the diameter is so large on the spinner itself that if I ran the two cones forward or ran the cones towards one another, they would hit. So no, no amount of spring tension would keep the spinner solid on the arbor. So we're going to go ahead and run the second one backwards to give it a backing. The first one will actually keep it centered on the arbor. We'll run our tension spring or compression spring up against that, our washer, and our piece of fuel tubing. And as long as we put ample pressure up against that spring, as you can see, our cone centers right in, and our back plate is very solid. 